Hey! <laughs> so as you guys are jumping on here, I was going to be talking tonight about some of the items in my fridge that are like weeks old. There we go. <laughs> now people are jumping on. So if you're just joining me tonight, I was just going through my fridge and I wanted to show you some of the items that were at least three weeks old. Some of them are as old as six weeks old that have been in my fridge. Some of the things I'm going to do to preserve them for a little bit longer and um, and that's it. So happy Friday. I hope you're having a great day. I always love the hearts. I um, mean, you guys are amazing. <laughs> I know you can't see them on the replay, but um, they give me life. So anyways, I have not went to the grocery store. My big like produce grocery shopping trip was on October 24th. And then I had went to get the things that I needed for um, Thanksgiving on November 5th because we did an early filming day. So I had actually went to the store twice kind of close to each other. But today is December 2nd and I have not been to the grocery store since November 5th. And um, I was able to do the filming day of hosting for Thanksgiving and um, also like we did real Thanksgiving here. So these are some of the produce items that I had bought and then some of them I didn't store like I normally did and I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix them. <laughs> so um, normally when I bring produce items home I wash them right away and I put them away and I will store them um, in glass containers most of the time for what they are especially like cucumbers and celery well I knew I was going to be making um, turkey stock after the holidays and so I wasn't too worried about getting my carrots um, peeled and put into glass containers and so I had just washed them I did wash them and threw them in the crisper drawer and they have been there for weeks and they were um well they're still a little bendy but I put them in some water a little while ago and it freshens them up again so um the other thing is is when you have bendy celery because this is pretty bendy you cut off the ends here um, and that opens up the vascular system of the plant so I'm just gonna cut off the end and then it makes it have a fresh, pretty end again. And when you put that in filtered water, it will suck up the water. You don't wanna do it in, um, in your tap water that has chlorine in it. So filtered water, whatever water you would drink. And um, it, will, it will go into the plant and it will stiffen it up again. So if you have wilty celery, you can totally just put the ends in water just like you would for this, like just put the ends in water, the whole thing doesn't need to go in there and it will firm it back up. So you can do that with carrots and celery. It doesn't have to stay that way. All you have to do is for a few hours and then you can take it out and you will have perfect carrots and celery again. So these are um, from November 5th, so almost a month old. So normally I would um, cut them right away when I get them and um, I normally keep them in sticks and then I put them in glass, and in glass Pyrex containers with no water, and celery and carrots will stay fresh three to four weeks. But this time, I just washed them and I had thrown them in my crisper drawer. Um, we had, honestly, we had um, a family member um, pass away, and so it kinda had just <laughs> sucked some of our energy out, and um, we didn't know that was going to happen, so our November had um, kinda changed plans a little bit. But. Um, so when I had purchased these, I thought I would be doing the stock like the day after Thanksgiving and I still haven't done it. So what I'm going to do, because I actually have a big container, I'll show you, a big container because I had bought a whole bunch of celery and carrots and I'm letting those refresh. Um, I am going to, I'm not making stock this weekend either. Um, I'm going to cut these up and cut this end off. And if the other end, there's a couple that the other ends look really sad. I'll show you it's a little bit I don't know I don't really like when it gets dark like that and so I will chop that off too and the other end and we'll give those to the chickens and then I'm going to dry these and put them in gallon size bags and put them in the freezer so when I do go around get around to making stock because um, I put the turkey carcass in the freezer after Thanksgiving 
then um, I'll have these all ready and I'm not wasting any of this. And even from the freezer, I can still um, chop these up smaller and I was able to get some of those out of the freezer that I had and use them for um, the turkey pot pie that I made for another recipe. <laughs> so I always have celery and carrots and onions on hand. Um, sometimes they're frozen, sometimes they're not, but I always have those available to cook, but sometimes it's, they're in the freezer. Um, spinach is another one that I'll wash and if I have too much, I'll just throw it in the freezer. Um, but it's really important to trim off that dead end, the celery, and then you'll get a new fresh end. So I'm going to scroll up. I saw a couple of people asking questions. Somebody asked about cucumbers, cucumbers and pineapple. Um, so cucumbers is another one that's super important when you bring it home, you get it out of the plastic. I always buy English cucumbers, so they're always in that plastic. I wash it when I bring it home and then I put it in the crisper drawer. So I normally have, talking too fast, I need to take a breath. <laughs> I normally have a um, like vegetable crisper drawer and then I always have my avocados, lemons, and any citrus in the other crisper drawer. So I keep that in the vegetable side um, for the cucumbers. So you're washing them when you bring them home with the vinegar wash and that kills off any mold spores. So it'll actually last longer because it won't have mold on it. And then, um, so normally around two weeks in the crisper drawer, they will stay fresh. And as I'm cutting them, I will cut them the rest of the way and I'll put them in a, um, a glass mason jar with the metal lid. So with a, I don't, oh here, here, I have black pepper right here. With a metal lid, <laughs> and I filled up my pepper shaker earlier. <laughs> but um, anyways, in a glass jar with a metal lid and it'll stay another week or so um, in the refrigerator. So that gets me my whole three week grocery cycle keeping cucumbers fresh. If you keep the skins on them, they will last, um, well, if you take the skins off, it'll be about five to seven days that they stay fresh. If you keep the skins on them, they will last um, like seven to 10 days. So cucumbers for your whole three week grocery shopping cycle right there. Um, somebody was asking about pineapples. Pineapple is one for sure when I bring it home, I wash. Um, in the winter, you don't have to worry about it as much, but in the summertime, oh my gosh, they are the worst for fruit flies. So when I bring it home, I make sure that I dunk it into a big pot. Um, and normally this pot that I just showed you a second ago, but I dump it crown side down first and let it sit for like five minutes trying to kill anything that's in that crown. And then I flip it over and I, and I wash it the other way. So while it's still whole, um, and then sometimes I'll leave it out on my counter until I'm ready to cut it. And then um, if it's like within the first week or so, and then I'll put it in the refrigerator. After that, normally in a glass container. And then, um, so those normally, those will normally last um, about two and a half to three weeks, depending on what the harvest season is and how ripe they were when you got them. And they're a great one to throw in the freezer. When, after you've sliced them, you can throw them into the freezer and then you can use those for smoothies or pulling them out for pizzas or different recipes. So you don't have to throw them away if you don't eat it all. Um, let me scroll and see if there's any more questions. I saw one of um, our very new Instagram subscribers is on here. I don't, I try not to say names unless I get super excited and then sometimes I do. But um, anyways, if you guys don't know, we have an Instagram subscription and um, so they always get like a heads up that I'm going to go live because you never know when I'm going to do it. And um, they also get a call with me once a month that um, we get to actually see each other's faces and they can ask me questions and um, we do that once a month and then they're a part of a private Facebook group. Um, also, so those are some of the benefits of being an Instagram subscriber and I answer all their questions all the time. And I see one of my elementary school friends on here too. <laughs> so you know who you are. But um, anyways, I wanted to go through some of these things that I showed this morning on, um, oh, on Clutterbug. So if you guys don't know who Cass is from Clutterbug, I've owned a housekeeping company for 15 years and I've been following her for years years um, she does all these like you have four different types of being an organized person and um, so <laughs> I'm always telling people you need to go take the clutter bug quiz and see what kind of organization you are so I mean obviously I like to see my things <laughs> and, um, and I like things that are pretty and those kind of things but um, 
Anyways, so Cass on Clutterbug, she has like 700,000 followers on YouTube. I was on her podcast today. That was super exciting. So that happened this morning. It's going to get, it was recorded this morning, and then um, it will get up on her podcast, which we'll share um, on Monday. And then this afternoon, we found out that our local newspaper, like, the big local newspaper is going to be in my kitchen on Wednesday. So TNT is going to be here in my kitchen on Wednesday. So I'm super excited about that. Um, so you just never know what's going to happen. Oh, and I was in a newspaper in Australia today. So like, um, you just never know what's going to happen day to day here. Um, anyways, all right, let me show you some of this other stuff that I have here. So this lettuce is actually from October. And it's one of those funny things. I'm like, no, 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 don't eat the lettuce. Like, we do that here, you know, because I'm like, oh, I want to show it as an example for whatever. So this is actually from October 24th. So this, these are just the little pieces that are left. But um, it's totally still crispy, and it still looks fresh and all the things. But listen, like totally fresh. October 24th. October 24th is when this is from. So um, isn't that crazy? So they're just the little pieces. We made all the big ones. But October 24th, that is perfect lettuce from October 24th. So when you're lay, after you wash it and dry it and all the things, when you lay it out to dry, um, I normally lay it this way for most of the time with the stem up, and then I'll flip it over later. But the water collects in this, in this part of the lettuce. So, but when you go to put it in your glass container, this is a Rezob container, we have a 20% off coupon code, or there's some kind of coupon code um, in our stories. But anyways, this is Rezob. But when you go to put it in the glass container, make sure that stem is up. So it, I always say it looks like an umbrella, not like a boat, like, so make sure it's like that. And that way water, like, um, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, somebody bought a badge. <laughs> I was like, what did that just say? But um, anyways, <laughs> I love you, Jess. <laughs> there you go. Um, anyways, so you don't want it to look like an umbrella. You want it to look like an umbrella, not like a boat. See, I totally got scroll brained. <laughs> um, but anyways, so make sure when you lay it in the container, they all look like umbrellas. And that way, the moisture that's still on the lettuce um, that still is inside the plant that will release over the coming weeks, it will start draining off. It won't collect in your boat. And that's why sometimes you'll get the brown stem if you do it the other way. So anyways, make sure it looks like an umbrella, not a boat. And then I have, I have this wrinkly pepper here too. It's a little kind of wrinkly. It's, it's getting there. It's still totally firm. Um, but this is from October 24th also. And apples in the fridge will last for months and months and months and months. So they last harvest season to harvest season. So you can leave them on the counter in a bowl, but not with oranges and bananas if they're all by themselves, or um, put them in the fridge and you will have fresh, perfect apples pretty much forever. So uh, asparagus, this is at least three weeks old, this asparagus. So again, this I trimmed the ends and I did filtered water in this. So you don't want to use your chlorine tap water, then your asparagus is going to taste like um, chlorine. So every when it gets down to the bottom, then I just add more water. I was in a hurry and just added a lot of water this time, but normally I keep it about halfway um, in there. And then this parsley, parsley and cilantro will last around six weeks. So I got a dead looking piece here I'll probably pull out but about every 10 days or so I will trim the ends and put it back in there and then this so this is another one don't eat the rest of these um these grapes was totally full October 24th today is December 2nd so these grapes are perfect Mike had some of them earlier today and I was just like no I want to show them on a the video so I mean you know <laughs> it's just kind of funny but um yeah, so those are grapes. Today is December 2nd. Those are from October 24th. You know, like literally you can have 
food security in your house and not have to throw food away if you just take a little bit of time to wash it and store it properly when you bring it home. So, I mean, again, I'm not running to the grocery store all of the time. I have not been to the grocery store since the beginning of November. And yes, I am dying to go to the grocery store right now because it's pomegranate season and I want some pomegranates. And I'm like, oh no, I can push it off a couple more days and a couple more days. And so, um, that's just how I do it. I just try to see how long I can push it off a little bit longer. So if you're going to the grocery store every single day, can you go skip and not go, you know, for two or three days? You don't have to like bust out and not go for a month like me. <laughs> you know, just try to go a little bit less than you were doing before. All right, I'm going to scroll back and see if there's any legit questions. If there's any spammers, I just don't answer them. Do you line the container with paper towels during storage and switch it out as needed? Um, the only one I really switch out is if a raspberry looks red, it bothers me, <laughs> so you don't really need to, but mushrooms, um, if you have mushrooms with a paper towel, that one really, I really do end up switching that out about two weeks in. So everything else, um, it's, it's pretty much fine. Mushrooms do need that dry paper towel though, so, and I get all of the time, like, Yes, I'm eco-friendly, all of the things. You can put a piece of cloth at the bottom. Again, I don't like, I have pretty white towels and we don't use bleach here, so I don't wanna stain them. Um, but um, I'd rather use you know, a couple paper towels a month. So that's about all we use um, paper towels for is for the bottom of our jars and a roll of paper towels lasts me for months and months and I'm okay with that. So if you want to use cloth, go ahead, but just know if you're doing it for strawberries or raspberries, it will probably stain. So that bothers me more than um, using a paper towel or two in my life. And then there's another paper towel question. So most of, yes, most of the um, jars, I do have paper towels. Um, I don't do that for sliced, like sliced, um, oh, I guess I don't do it for most of the things that I slice. I don't do it for celery, carrots, cucumbers, peppers. Um, hmm, that's interesting. I didn't even know I didn't do that. So, yeah. So I might have to like write that down somewhere, but I don't normally use a paper towel on sliced carrots, cucumbers, everything in my salad basket, which I normally have in a salad basket, but normally all of my fruits um, have one at the bottom. I'm just trying to think of what else we have. So the fruits, whenever I'm doing a gallon size jar, I normally do just to um, let it soak up some of that moisture. So the other thing I have been working on lately is dehydrating apples. So I have about 50 pounds of apples and I've made all the applesauce I need to make and I still have some apples left and I've been dehydrating apples in my dehydrator. So these are just such a lovely crunchy snack and um, they take between 12 and 24 hours depending on how um, thin you slice them in a dehydrator and then you have fresh apples all year. So. When you want something crunchy and you don't want a chip or something like an apple. Um, the other thing I really love dehydrating and eating like a snack is mushrooms. So I actually don't like the texture of mushrooms that much, but I love them dehydrated, which is really funny. Okay, how do you keep broccoli and green beans longer? So bro broccoli and green beans are different. So broccoli, I normally cut the, um, the end of the crown after I washed it, and I normally wash that one in salt water. Um, and then I put it in a jar just like this and it kind of sits on top in the refrigerator and it will stay fresh for like three weeks. Um, every week or 10 days or so, I'll just trim about a quarter of an inch off of the bottom of the broccoli and it will stay fresh like that. If you bought it already chopped, then put it in a larger jar. So when we start using jars, we start it with pickle jars too. So you don't have to go out and buy, you know, pretty jars that are on my Amazon storefront, but um, pickle jars <laughs> work also. Um, and then uh, green beans, I normally only soak those for one minute, not two minutes. So only one minute, let those dry out just like I do on washing days, and then I store those in normally a flat um, glass container, uh, Pyrex, Pyrex container with the snap lids. Um, with the paper towel at the bottom of those and those should last a couple weeks also so getting them out of the plastic grocery bag if you don't have like the pretty little mesh um, bags that are on our storefront <laughs> but um 
getting them out of the plastic bags and washing them kills off the mold spores and just getting them out of the plastic is better always it's just better so I just kind of wanted to show you you know like um, oh somebody's asking more about the broccoli broccoli has water in the jar yep yeah so filtered water at the um, bottom so just like a plant so you want to think about it's going to soak up the water into the plant we use our Berkey water but any filtered water um, if you're using uh, if you're using uh, chlorine tap water it will kill the plant so I don't normally drink that kind of water and so <laughs> there you go we have chlorine in our water is that bad for washing the veggies for washing the veggies it's okay like I totally use the the tap water for washing but not when I'm doing something that I want it to suck up into the plants because then it will taste like that kind of like those um, baby bullet carrots um, they taste like chlorine because they're soaked in chlorine so that's why they turn gray too that's why I buy big carrots I can't scroll and talk at the same time my scroll brain gets like we had like six inches of snow yesterday so it's been kind of fun here it looks like a winter wonderland and um, it's been nice not having to leave the house and to have food security in our house even though we haven't been to the grocery store in a month we have plenty of fresh items uh, somebody was asking me about something behind me um, that's my instapot um, behind me I have a roast in it um, so we're gonna have that for dinner when I get done doing this okay so what else Cauliflower is one that even if you don't wash it when you bring it home, make sure you get it out of the plastic and put that one in your crisper drawer. I had somebody um, recently like, oh, my zucchini isn't lasting very long. And we were talking and they had their zucchini and their citrus together and their grapefruit together and it was killing off each other. So um, make sure you keep your citrus together with avocados and then your other vegetables in another um, drawer. So anyways, um, I hope that you have learned something and you have a little bit of inspiration of using those produce items that are in your fridge and not having to run to the grocery store all of the time. Um, I do have a best-selling book that's on Amazon and thecrosslegacy.com called I Bought It, Now What? And it has tips for 50 produce items and how to keep them fresh for weeks. And we have a grocery course to teach you how I go grocery shopping and with only a budget of $135 per person in our family. So on average, we're only spending $200 a month at the grocery store. We have food security. We are eating organic and we're an allergy family. So um, just go check out the, um, go check out the course. That's at thecrosslegacy.com and um, it's called the grocery solution over there and there's all kinds of videos there's PDFs there's downloads there's all kinds of things in that course and we're continuing to add to it every single month like we want to add in season items and really be able to teach you how to do things um, all year long so you don't forget about it <laughs> and then um, the course we have a shop so there's this um, sale on the shop right now and um, so there's a uh, cloth bags on there and there's produce bags and there's some fun magnets and different merch to support the cross legacy which is really great and then the newspaper is going to be here on wednesday and the um blog blog or podcast um with <laughs> i'm reading questions and i can't concentrate the <laughs> podcast um with Cass is going to be released on monday and I was in an Australian newspaper today, so we had that tagged up in our stories too. So I'm going, I saw a couple questions popping through that were legit, and I'm going to answer those. So it is okay to wash with chlorine water, with your tap water, but when I'm trying to, like this pot, I'm trying to suck up the water into the plant and have it stored in that plant. So these different things I have filtered water in. So you don't want... You don't want chlorine soaking up into your plants because then it will taste like chlorine. So that's when I use filtered water. If I'm just washing something, then I just wash it with our tap water. Um, and that probably varies, you know, wherever you are. Ours, I'm really sensitive to the chlorine water. Um, somebody said that they've learned so much from me sharing. Thank you. I never thought the pictures inside my fridge would change the world. I grew up on a farm. <laughs> I just thought this was the way everybody um, thought. <laughs> you know, I did not realize. I did not realize at all when I started 
doing this that so many people threw away so much groceries. Like, I had no idea that people threw away so many leftovers and so many groceries. I, I just didn't understand it. And when we started doing research on it and found out it was 30 to 40% of what you're buying, you're throwing away. Like, that was crazy to me. And then the World Economic Forum came out and said that it was 61% globally. 61% of the food that you're buying, you are throwing away. Like, people are so worried about keeping their jobs and the rising prices and gas prices and the prices at the grocery store and all of those things. But really, the secret of fixing your grocery budget happens in your home. So being able to save that 40 to 60% that other people are throwing away, that is what is the big deal breaker. So um, I'm just so thankful that you're here and that you can learn these things from me. Um, and they are tried and true. These are things that I do every single month. I have showed every single grocery shopping trip for over a year now to really show you guys what month old produce looks like um, and that it really lasts. It's not just some random thing I learned on TikTok. Like I'm the one that's <laughs> teaching you guys and people are <laughs> doing it, copying it um, on different platforms, but it's all good because then they end up coming back and finding me because I have the real instructions that will have your strawberries lasting for a month <laughs> or three weeks. Um, somebody said, we really want to thank you. We love your bubbly personality too. I used to get in trouble in school for being so bubbly, but <laughs> just talk, talk, talk. But uh, anyways, thank you for repeating, Mr. Answer. I have a family of five need food to last. Yes. So um, we've been foster parents over the years, so our family size varies. So sometimes there can be two of us here, and sometimes there's eight of us here. Um, so I know how to cook for a large family, and you know, sometimes when it's just Mike and I here, it's actually super harder to keep food fresh longer, and you're not going through those leftovers as quick and all of those things. So. Um, yeah, so I I have, we have done, you know, big, small families, all the things in between. <laughs> I love all the hearts. I do answer every single DM that comes that is appropriate. So if you are on here and you are truly wanting to learn how to save money on groceries, I spend on average about four hours a day answering questions So to followers. So if they're not spammers, I just delete those. But if you are truly here and have a question and want to learn more, like I answer every single question on Instagram, all of those hearts on comments, those are me actually reading every single one that comes in. We have over 200 videos on YouTube now, so make sure you check that out. Most of your questions, um, the answers are over there because I have videos for everything on YouTube. And then we have a blog, thecrosslegacy.com, that has a weekly recipe or a tip or something going on. We're talking about emergency preparedness. Um, I'm normally doing allergy-friendly recipes or diabetic-friendly recipes, things that our family is eating. Um, so make sure that you're checking us out on all the different platforms. Follow us on YouTube, um, all the things. But I really appreciate every single person that is here that is truly wanting to learn how to save money on groceries and feed their families better. So thank you for being here. Thank you for hanging out. And um, we will talk to you later.